I would like to thank uh, Dr. Wagner for this introduction, and I'm very happy to be here back in Cambridge, where I uh, was lucky enough to enjoy uh, the hospitality of uh, Professor Yasser Suleiman and Dr. Paul Anderson uh, two years ago. Um, our topic is, well, it's uh, light-hearted indeed. Uh, I've spent uh, four years bit more now, uh, reconstructing the yet unwritten history of uh, Arab animation in general. And uh, not surprisingly, I found Egypt to be not only the heart of the Arab filmmaking in general, but also the heart of uh, Arab animated uh, cartoon production. Um, while animated cartoon production obviously could be viewed as a uh, business for creating marketable production. It is also a cultural production that reflects and also advocates the cultural values and identities uh, of the producers and the societies uh, where they are uh, produced. Especially as animated cartoons are an extremely open format uh, which could be flexibly adapted according to uh, cultural and also political uh, preferences. The history of Egyptian animation uh, goes back to the 30s and, uh, and something which I observed when interviewing uh, animators of today and reading the records uh, back then that animated cartoon producers in Egypt and also in the Arab world were uh, largely inspired uh, by American animated cartoons and they, the producers always had a very ambivalent feeling toward this one-way flow of Western cultural uh, products to their homeland. On one hand, they uh, praised them for the technological advance and the excellence in narratives. Uh, on the other hand, they regarded it as, uh, as cultural agent and uh, symbols of uh, cultural dominance. And their obvious choice, which they always repeated, is to create to create the, uh, the the animated cartoons in Egypt and to be the Walt Disney's of uh, Egypt. A very ambitious uh, ambitious plan indeed. For start, we should uh, review the evolution of animation technologies. Uh, first. Uh, since the uh, early, uh, early 20th century, uh, satellite animation uh, spread, uh, mainly in France and the United States and also the UK and other technologically advanced <coughs> Western uh, countries. Uh, satellite animation only reached Egypt in the 30s, uh, with a big delay. Uh, that also was the case in the case of uh, computer-generated imagery, imagery uh, which was developed in the 60s. Uh, although it only uh, reached Egypt uh, in the 90s. And we uh, right until today uh, to the age of 3D animated cartoons. We, uh, there was a big breakthrough in this production of the 3D animations in uh, 1995 when Toy Story was, uh, uh, was presented in cinemas and became a huge success uh, around the world. Uh, the earth, early, uh, sorry. <laughs> the early period uh, of animation production, the solid animation and uh, CGI, could be defined uh, by, uh, by some hardships as it was a very expensive and uh, very talent-intensive uh, industry. Uh, therefore, it was uh, a privilege of particular elites uh, of Cairo and uh, before Alexandria. Um, and uh, in, any in any case, uh, politics also found a way to animation production because uh, the producers relied not only on funding but also on, uh, on uh, cinemas and television uh, channels as ultimate censors of their productions. And of course, as animation production was very uh, expensive, uh, none of the producers wanted to be censored after producing uh, one uh, minute of animation with a huge amount of money. So starting from the uh, 20th century, Egypt uh, acted as a geographical center of Arab cinema production. Uh, so uh, it was not only about production, but all about the society, as uh, multicultural Alexandria uh, back then drew huge numbers of uh, 
young artists and individuals and, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, including Italy, as it, uh, it were Italian investors who first uh, established a fil uh, film company in uh, Alexandria, and also actors and uh, directors like the Lama brothers who migrated uh, to Egypt from, uh, uh, from uh, Argentine, Argentina, and they had a Lebanese background themselves. So the beginning of Arab animation dates back to this multicultural uh, scene in Alexandria and Cairo of the early 20th century. However, the story starts in Russia uh, back then. Betsyel Frankel uh, was born to Russia, uh, was born in Russia, and today is Belarus uh, to a Jewish family. This period was a very turbulent uh, time and decades for Jews living in uh, Russia as uh, starting from, the, uh, from uh, 1881, programs against Jewish communities in Russia uh, started and also became frequent after that. So many of the uh, Jews living back then in Russia decided to leave uh, their homeland and uh, headed to different parts of the world. Uh, most of them headed to, uh, Palestinian, uh, to Palestine uh, back then. In, uh, in uh, 1905, Betsyl Franker, together with uh, his wife uh, Gnissa and their son Herschel, uh, fled uh, to Palestine and settled down in the city of uh, Jaffa, then part of the Ottoman Empire and a safe haven of Jewish communities fleeing uh, persecution in Russia. Betsyl opened a bookshop and tried to make ends meet with doing some businesses in, uh, in selling books and also printing and, bind and uh, binding and trading uh, with books. Uh, within a decade, the family grew with uh, five more children, uh, amongst them uh, Shlomo and uh, David. Unfortunately, uh, history disrupted the life of the Frankels again, as the hostility between the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire uh, grew in the wake of World War I and it affected the Frankos in an unfavorable way. <coughs> uh, after the Ottomans withdrew from Tel Aviv on November the uh, 27th of uh, 1914, uh, many Jews of uh, Palestine were suspected for being Russian agents and spies. So uh, huge numbers of them were against, uh, again forced to flee. Amongst them the Frankos who uh, moved uh, to Alexandria, Egypt, this multicultural uh, uh, city uh, back then. Unfortunately, being foreign-born uh, people, they uh, couldn't receive Egyptian uh, nationality. In 1935, uh, the sons of the Frankos, uh, David, Herschel and Shlomo, moved, uh, moved uh, to Cairo. Back then, Art Deco was very popular among the upper middle class and the higher classes, uh, so they tried to make ends meet by decorating furniture. They were indeed successful in this business as they received contacts from uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and also the palace of uh, King Farouk. Uh, back then, uh, it was a time in the early 30s when uh, animated cartoons, Disney, uh, Disney's Mickey Mouse and a couple, of later, a couple of years of later, Felix the, the Cat, uh, debuted in cinemas of uh, Cairo and uh, Alexandria, and it became a huge success. The Frankels were uh, very much inspired by this production and also by Charlie Chaplin, who they saw as a symbol of the poor man who trying to succeed uh, in his life. So they planned to produce their own animated cartoons. Uh, as they had no equ equipment, they uh, uh, they used very basic cameras and set up a studio, a very basic studio in their own apartment. The, uh, so, in 1935, Marco Manchi <coughs> was born. Uh, Marco Manchi, which was indeed the first uh, Arab animated cartoon, was uh, hailed by Le, uh, uh, excuse my French pronunciation, La, La Bruce Egyptienne. Uh, it was hailed as the uh, Egyptian brother of Mickey Mouse. However, it was not, not a success uh, for Al Ahram, the most prestigious Egyptian newspaper back then, which criticized the Frankels for producing a mere mimicry of uh, 
uh, of American animation. As we see, the background could be anywhere in the West, and uh, Marco Monkey had no Egyptian features as well. So Akhra Al Akram, uh, the article, one article in Al Akram, advised the Francos to focus much more on Egyptian culture and Egyptian scenes and characters. Actually, it was a trend back then, as the Lama brothers, for example, who we mentioned before and were of uh, Argentinian Lebanese origin, uh, around this time produced uh, Salahuddin, uh, uh, an epos about a historical character uh, of the Arab past, and it became a general trend of Egyptian cinemas. So, two years later, Mishmish Effendi was born <laughs> and was presented in Cosmograph Cinema. Uh, as we see from here, well, according, according to an unverified anecdote, uh, Mishmish Effendi got his name uh, after the Frankos were refused by a producer, wealthy producer, for uh, when they asked for funding for the animation, and the producer told them "Bukra filmishmish" in the meaning with when pigs fly. Uh, also, they he said that there mafish feida, so there's no benefit uh, from making animated cartoons. So, according to this unverified anecdote, they started. Uh, the story of Mishmish Effendi started this way. However, the character of Mishmish Effendi uh, draws many similarities with, uh, with uh, other characters like Charlie Chaplin and El Misri Effendi, who was a popular uh, cartoon <coughs> in the Egyptian uh, newspapers back then. Also, his uh, good friend, a uh, man of uh, Nubian uh, origin, uh, as we can guess, had very much similarities with the presentation of African Americans in American animated cartoons back then. While we can see his lover very much looks like Betty Boop, also popular uh, back then. So, uh, now I'm going to... Yeah. So let us see uh, small spots uh, from Mishmi Shafendi. Uh, unfortunately, I have to roll uh, in it because it's 15 uh, minutes long. Um, because I failed to mention that uh, Mishmish Effendi became very popular back then. And uh, at, after the outbreak of World War II, King Farouk saw the war as an opportunity to get rid of the British uh, rule. Therefore, in order to support the loans uh, initiated by the Egyptian government uh, for the army, the Ministry of War ordered a peace from the Francos. To, uh, to make this idea uh, more popular and, uh, and have the support of the Egyptian people. So, El uh, Defa al Watani, so national fort, uh, national defense was born. Thank you. 
Francisco and Buddy. They're, of course, dressed in Egyptian dress.